back with Chief Eve Thomas with the Knoxville Police Department. Again, thank you for being here, Chief. It's good to have you. Um, we had left off on our conversation about the opioid crisis. Is that the biggest problem on our streets right now, or what would you say is? Well, I think as a whole, um, drugs, illegal drugs, really contribute to most of the crime that we have in Knoxville, be it our homicide rate, our property crimes rate, because most of the people, the property crimes are done to uh, make money for drug habits. So I, I think, yes, that's probably, it's, it's very high on our priority list. So in that line of thinking, there's a move in the legislature to talk about legalizing marijuana, at least on a, a medical level. Is that something you would support? No, absolutely not. I, I just, you know, legalizing marijuana, it, it, first of all, it's against federal law, mm -hmm. uh, which I've sworn to uphold, as all officers have. But the other issue is that it, it it's, seems to be a gateway drug. There's a lot of research, citable research, that, that shows that it is not beneficial me medically. It's not a medical alternative. The FDA has not researched it enough and endorsed it. If the FDA was to come out and say it's a medical option, I, I could get behind that. Part of the problem, though, is, uh, uh, from my understanding, Congress have, has not given the FDA that authority to study it. So it feels like we're flying blind in some cases that we don't have definitive studies by, indeed, uh, the CDC or some other federal entity that is giving uh, just bona fide science. Is that fair? That is fair, and we're caught in a catch-22 in that area. Um, we are seeing a push to increase the hemp production in the state. There are bills in the legislature for that. They are cousins, marijuana and hemp, but also difficult to distinguish. Does that make your job harder? It does, it, and it is very difficult to distinguish between the two. They look the same. They feel the same. People smoke them, uh, smoke hemp. Uh, so it's, you know, it's transported. It's, it, it's very hard, but it's legal. It's legal to transport. It's legal to use. It's legal to grow. So it does make things very difficult for us. And we may see a lot more of it because if you talk to farmers, they see that as a potential cash crop in the years ahead, given the popularity of the CBD oil um, that's on the streets now. Hemp only has, I think it's, it's less than 3% of THC, the active ingredient that gets you high. Um, but again, it, it does present some challenges for officers. It does, and it, it does. So, you know, we're, we're trying to look for our normal indicators as far as, you know, packaging for resale and things like that that would indicate marijuana as opposed to hemp. So, but it does, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. it, it is a, it's a challenge for our, our officers on the street. But you're not necessarily opposed to hemp production. I can't give you a good answer on that. Because it is so close to marijuana and it presents those challenges, that's my opposition to it at this point. Um, I want to move to some other conversations about the shoot, don't shoot conversations we hear consistently in the national media. Um, what can you say about the training that officers go through um, from the time they start with the department to a person in your position who has broad experience? Um, that decision is a split second decision. Um, how are your officers trained when it comes to shoot, don't shoot decisions? Well, you know, they're, they're trained as far as what the law is, which is the most important thing. I mean, we're in defense of ourselves or, or our community. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest thing we worry about as far as if we're gonna shoot or not shoot. I think one of the fallacies, uh, misnomers that people have is that we are trained to where we could shoot a gun out of someone's hand. Mm -hmm. And that's just in the movies. We, we don't do that. We actually train to stop the threat and we, we're trained to shoot at the biggest portion visible, whatever that portion may be of, of someone's body. So, but we're trained starting in the academy, in the law, we're trained in how to fire the weapons that we carry and how to be proficient with them. Uh, and that goes on throughout our career. Uh, we, on a yearly basis, we get retraining in all the laws and retraining in how to use our weapons. And we're, we're very careful as to follow the laws as they come out. Um, the law really hasn't changed much since I've, I've been a police officer. Uh, it's Tennessee versus Garner has stayed the same. And, um, but we continually talk about it. We continually talk about the things you do before you shoot your weapon. You give a warning, drop, drop your gun, drop your weapon. Um, and, and we do, we train you, that. You also look at the background. Uh, I went through a FATS training exercise where it's a sort of a video game, if you will, where you're barking orders to a subject that is behaving in one way that may be controlled by another officer who's testing you. And one of the things that I did was fire the weapon and without even thinking there was a playground behind the suspect I was shooting at. 
Yes, sir, that's true. That's it, that we always, we have to consider a whole lot more than our suspect or our bad guy has to consider because we have to protect the community. So we do have to look beyond where is our bullet gonna go you know, if we miss or even if it goes through that, that bad guy. So we, we have to be very aware of that. Well, Chief, we're going to continue our conversation um, right after this short break. Again, it's great to have you. We'll be back right after this.